Okay, I hate lecterns, so just excuse me if I stand in front of it. I only have one slide, so it's not going to take long to go through it. But <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd give you all a bit of a break. But I'm a brain analyst, right? So as an analyst, I look for patterns. So Melbourne's a brand. Cities are a brand, or at least they tell us they are. What makes a brand? What goes into it? As people have been talking, I kind of wrote down a list. So what makes a brand? People, places, objects, buildings, landscape, intentions, organised endeavour, otherwise known as planning, disorganised happenstance, otherwise known as grassroots, government, industry, politics, commerce, culture, climate, geography, arts, if you're in Melbourne, coffee. <laughs> so these are just some of the things that all interact together to make a city a brand. Now you'll notice what's missing in all that. Um, design. We're in a room full of designers of various sorts and it's pretty hard for us all to swallow sometimes that we don't have the impact we like to have. And when it comes to things like brands, designers have very little impact. That's the heresy of what I talk about with just about everyone I work with and every sort of talk I give like this. The reason I say designers don't have much to do with brand is because brands are a result, not an intent. And just think about that for a minute in terms of how it relates to what a city is. Cities are a result. They've been going on generally for lots and lots and lots of years. The number one city in the, um, it's called Anholt, I think, the Anholt Brand Cities Brand Index. They, every couple of years, they rank the top brand cities all around the world. The number one city in 2011, which was the last time the survey was done, was Paris. Paris has been going on for a while now. <laughs> okay, so it didn't just happen overnight. No designer came in and said, I'm going to make Paris a brand. It's sort of absurd at the thought, right? Paris is this really complicated combination of wonderful bunch of stuff. All of the things that I mentioned and a whole bunch of other things aside. You can't, you can't plan that. It's actually something that just happens. So, if we don't design cities, what, what is the contribution we can all make? And if I come back to one of the questions of tonight's session, around what is the role of the designer, and are we all designers? I think it's quite interesting in my own experience because a little dirty secret. I'm an analyst, but first I was a designer. By training many years ago. So I get to say bad things about designing because I was. Um, so there. Um, but here's the thing that design, first and foremost, is about how you think. I always say to people that design taught me how to think. It didn't teach me something to do. And I still use that thinking every day today. Like with all of my clients, that's the thing I ask them to do. Think, please. There's a deliberate nature to the way we think about problems when we are designers, a way we deconstruct them and put them all back together again. That actually has terrific value to the way we build things and the way we build cities. And so I think design does have a role in how we can drive cities forward into the future. But I think it would be incredible, incredible hubris to believe that we have more than a passing impact. Because when it comes right down to it, it's what we actually do. It's what the people around, what the whole community that was talked about does, that actually creates the brand, that creates the city, that then keeps going. And the next generation makes its impact. Thank you.